All right, I want to play a little bit of Afterburner 2 for the Sega Genesis. I love that we're flying on the Enterprise, because I am a big Star Trek fan. Of course, you know, what does Star Trek have to do with uh, aircraft carriers? Well, you just have to read your history about that. But uh, yeah, this game here is clearly inspired by the movie Top Gun. And uh, was extremely popular back in 1987. I think it was one of the highest grossing arcade games back then. It was created by Yu Suzuki and Sega's AM2 division. Of course, this game is so popular, there has been so, so many ports to different uh, gaming systems and computers. I mean, there was a Master System version that was extremely popular. Of course, the uh, uh, Commodore Amiga had a version, uh, the PC had a version, the Atari ST even had a version. And I think there was a couple of versions for the uh, Commodore 64, actually, more than one. Did you ever get a chance to see the sit-down Afterburner arcade machine? That was pretty cool because I think it had like a gyroscope or whatever where the whole, the whole cabinet would move as you were playing it. And I think that's the one John Connor was playing in Terminator 2. Now there's something weird about this game though. This is Afterburner 2 and not Afterburner. There was something about the original Afterburner that was messed up or something and they decided to, to fix it and then they called it Afterburner 2. But it's this is basically the same as the original arcade game. I, I don't know what the differences are. I like how you can spin around and do a do a barrel roll or air, aileron roll as people like to call it these days. And of course the original arcade had sprite scaling technology where you could see the like the like you see that right there the bushes and everything or the trees how uh, they'll zoom in but uh, the Genesis did not have that functionality so they had to fake it with you know sprites that were different sizes. You know, and I also have to think that while this game was inspired by Top Gun, I feel like the Atari Lynx game Blue Lightning was inspired by Afterburner. And I remember going into the arcades and playing this and just, you know, you get that real sense of invincibility while you're flying and then as soon as you get hit by a missile and blow up, you're like, uh, you just kind of <laughs> deflate. But the whole time that you're playing it, you just feel and, you know, hyped up, amped up. It really gets your adrenaline going, you know? And the weird thing is, I've never been a real big fan of Space Harrier, but in reality, Space Harrier and Afterburner are kind of similar. I mean, you're, you're flying into the screen, shooting at objects that are coming at you from on the screen, right? But I like this game way better. I guess maybe it's because of the F-14 Tomcat, and I just love that jet. <laughs> it's one of my favorite uh, fighters of all time. Of course, the sad part is it was retired because of the maintenance costs America doesn't have anymore. And uh, one of the reasons why America doesn't have any more F-14s is because I want to say, is it North Korea or Afghanistan or some, some foreign country that we're at odds with um, has a whole collection of F-14s and America does not want to uh, support those with parts so um, we basically mothballed our entire collection of uh, F-14s just to prevent this country from having parts <laughs> to be able to fix their their F-14s. But you just can't deny how awesome that, that fighter jet looks. Clearly it's not the the master of the skies anymore, like I guess what's the F-18 I guess, the Hornet is probably the number one jet these days, but nothing can top the looks of the F-14. It just looks so aggressive and so powerful. Uh oh, I've got a, uh, a missile behind me chasing me. That's one of the things that I, I kind of fall off on when I'm playing the, uh, the Genesis version is speed. I can never remember which button it is to, uh, to to really hit the gas or to hit the afterburners. 
But like on the arcade machine, you have a throttle, so you just push it forward or backwards, and, and it's a lot easier to control your speed. Of course, the uh, huge advantage of this game over the Top Gun game for the NES is that you don't have to worry about landing on the aircraft carrier. It just lands automatically. I mean, I don't even think you land on a carrier in this. I think you just land... There's a field that you land on later, and of course you get refueled by that, um, that aerial refueling jet, plane, whatever it is. Man, I'm really jamming here. Oh no, they got me. I was trying to get as far as I possibly could. I mean, here I am on stage 10. I'm really, really trying to push it as far as I can. Okay, here's our uh, refueling jet. I like it better when you land, though, because you get to see the, uh, the little motorcycle chase after you. <laughs> I always imagine that's Tom Cruise trying to catch up to me in the, in the F-14. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh, that was awesome. Come on, stay alive, stay alive. No! <laughs> well, I guess I'm uh, destined to be flying a cargo carrier full of rubber dog crap from Hong Kong. So, oh well, this afterburner for the Sega Genesis. I love this game. I love most of all iterations of this game. It's so much fun. Yeah, you should definitely play it. It's awesome.